Question 2.1 reads as follows. It says, the root of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, are given by x equals negative 5 plus minus the square root of 25 minus 8k divided by 4. 2.1.1 says, find a possible value of a and a possible value of b if both a and b are elements of natural numbers. Okay, not complicated. Now, what you need to know is, if you guys are familiar with finding the, the roots of a quadratic equation, you should know that there are many methods that we can use to try and find the solution. One of them is using the quadratic formula. So I want to draw your attention to the fact that if we had to use the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation, you could be looking at something that looks exactly like what we have here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a game of comparison here. For example, you will notice that if you look at the given information on 2.1, this part here is definitely supposed to say something about what we are looking at here. It has to do with this negative b that you're looking at. So I'm going to make an argument and say negative b is equal to negative 5, which then tells us that if you divide both sides by negative 1, you will end up with a b value of 5. And this is actually true because if you check inside the square root sign, the b squared part would have to be 5 squared, and you can see from the given information that b squared happens to be 25, because 5 squared is 25, so the possible value of b could be 5. Now, what I'm going to do after this is now try to compare the denominator. The denominator of a normal quadratic is 2a. The quadratic formula has a 2a on the denominator, so I can play the equality game of equating that to 4. So which means if I just take 2a and I equate it to 4, I can then find that a possible value of a could just simply be 2. So those will be possible values of both a and b. That is the answer for 2.1.1. Okay, let's move on to 2.1.2. Very exciting question indeed. 2.1.2 says which values of k will make the roots of the equation to be non-real for all real values of k? Remember, once we start talking about non-real roots, the, the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is what lies inside the square root sign. Because you guys know, for example, if you ask you for the nature of roots, the first thing that comes to your mind is the b squared minus 4ac. But then if they say we want values of k that will make the roots to be non-real, it means Whatever you have as your delta value, you just have to put it less than zero. Why? Because if the stuff under the square root sign of the quadratic formula becomes negative, if you're looking for the square root of anything negative, you will not get a real number. You will get a non-real solution. So if you are smart, you should have noticed something very exciting here, which is the fact that the b squared minus 4ac is inside the square root sign of the quadratic formula. So whatever is inside the square root of the quadratic formula does give me the value of the discriminant, your delta. So I don't even need to have the actual quadratic equation. This is more like they've done it for me. So I'm just going to go and steal whatever is inside the square root sign there and put it less than zero. Okay, so how is that going to pan out? So 2.1.2, I'm going to take 25 minus 8k and put it less than zero for roots of that particular equation to be non-real. From here, you've got negative 8k is less than negative 25. You obviously need to divide both sides by negative 8, which then leaves you with a k value of greater than 25 all over 8. Please keep in mind that every time you're going to divide in an inequality or multiply, by a negative. As long as you're dividing or multiplying by a negative, the inequality needs to change direction. It can't keep facing the same direction. And this is only and only if you are dividing by a negative. So please make sure that you don't make those kinds of rookie mistakes. If you're dividing by any other number, it is okay. But as long as it's negative, the inequality needs to change direction all the time. All right, moving right along. Uh, the next question says to us here, which is question uh, 2.2, Simplify without using a calculator. It says, without using a calculator, evaluate what we are looking at there. Okay, that's pretty exciting. So let's copy that down and try to find the value of that. So that's basically your question 2.2. We have to find the value of the square root of 4 to the power 20, 21, minus 4 to the power of 20, 20, everything 
divided by 4 to the power of 2019. We need to find the value of that. Minus 6 divided by the square root of 3. Now, the tricky part here is they're saying we are not allowed to use a calculator. Let's just find a solution to this without using a calculator. What is the value of this? All right. So I'm going to start applying my basic algebraic skills. First of all, let's check what is going on with this part here, right? The second part here. So what we have here is a situation where we've got an irrational denominator. And rationalization of the denominator requires us to multiply this by the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3. We're going to use laws of search to try and simplify this situation here. So that's the first thing that I'm going to basically do here. Rationalize the second term by multiplying with the square root 3 over square root 3. Okay. All right, now when you go into the square root sign, under the square root sign, those exponential terms that you see there, I'm going to apply a technique of math that says if you've got a minus b divided by one term, you can actually split this into a over c minus b over c. So these are some of the ideas that I'm going to engage as I try to simplify those exponential terms because we're not allowed to use a calculator. So I'm gonna put this as four to the power of 2021 divided by four to the power of 2019 minus four to the power of 2020 divided by four to the power of 2019. So I'm just splitting the denominator and then I'm gonna say minus. Now when you're multiplying your six over square root three, it's gonna be six times square root three, which is six square root three. You should know that when you're multiplying, we multiply straight all the time. And now according to the laws of sets, root three times root three gives us three. This is actually the very same reason why we were multiplying by root 3 over root 3. We want a rational denominator. Now I'm here, I'm going to apply laws of exponents. They basically say to us when you're dividing for same basis, you have to subtract the, the exponent. So 2021 minus 2019 gives you a 2. And then 2020 minus 2019 will just give you 4 to the power of 1. And then on the second one, 6 divided by 3 is 2 square root of 3. Okay. Now, 16 will come from 4 squared. 16 minus 4 is 12. So I'm sitting with the square root of 12 minus 2 square root 3. Remember I said don't use a calculator. So we still need to go all the way simplifying this without using a calculator. The square root of 12 is just 4 multiplied by 3. I'm applying the laws of sets that say if you've got the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B, it's just the square root of A times B. So if you can be able to move yourself forward, the reverse is also true. And that's the idea I'm trying to apply for 12. Right, so minus 2 square root 3 here. And then obviously this is going to be, you split this to square root 4, uh, multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 2 root 3. Square root 4 is 2. So you're looking at 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3. And the final answer here comes out as exactly equal to 0. Okay.